Ananda Brindavan Prabhu has question. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Very nice class. Maharaj, you are speaking about KC, that you don't have to show that you are great. In spiritual life, what happens is, this is my experience somewhat. In the beginning of our Krishna consciousness, uh, somebody tells you you are great. We know the philosophy and we understand that I am nothing. All the things is happening by Krishna. And I have to maintain the humility, otherwise there will be no way I can maintain my Krishna consciousness. But when you spend more and more years in devotional life, and somehow by Krishna's inconceivable way, you get some success. And then the flow of devotees tell that you are great. Everybody tells you are great. Everybody says that something is special in you. That flow which is coming at a time, to maintain a mental equilibrium at that moment of time, it's extremely difficult, even if we know the philosophy. And we know that supposing anything going wrong, I'll be going away from Krishna consciousness altogether because pride will kill me and pride is the only thing that Krishna doesn't want it. So when, when a big flow of greatness and all those things comes, at that time, even if we know the philosophy, then also it becomes so difficult to maintain the mental equilibrium. At that time, what is the shelter that we have to take at that moment of time so that our consciousness doesn't get disturbed and we maintain the same humility what we wanted to have it? Hey, Krishna. <laughs> Your question is very great. <laughs> Because you are very great. <laughs> and being so great as you are with such great questions, what is your hope for survival? <laughs> the only hope is to be honest be simple, and be grateful, because nothing is yours. In a second, you could be blind. In a second, you could lose your power to speak, lose your power to think, lose your power to follow moral principles. Material energy is infinitely more powerful than us. We have to take shelter. So when people say we're great, it should actually humble us. It shouldn't make us proud. Because we should know that we're not the doer. That Krishna is doing through me? This is his greatness. The more we're per a, a sincere devotee, the more they're glorified and praised, the more humble they get. Because it's, he's saying this, it's almost like magnifying our worthlessness when people pray it, praise us. Because we realize it's not me. It's Krishna. We take shelter of Krishna. And we're grateful to Krishna for allowing us to do this service for him as long as he wants us to do it. And we're grateful to the people in that sense who are even praising us because they're humbling us. That's not just knowledge. That's just being honest. It's dishonest to take credit. It's just like if, if a wealthy man gives his assistant 10 crores of rupees to put in the bank. 
and the man goes and says, this is my money. Is that honest? Not only is it not honest, but it just doesn't work. It's just a matter, he, he may fool the banker and everything like that for a little time, but eventually he has to pay the consequence. So similarly, whatever we have is the gifts. If it wasn't for all the Vaishnavas around who have given us so much knowledge and so much inspiration and so much direction and so much strength, we couldn't be doing the service we're doing. If it wasn't for our gurus and our guru parampara, we wouldn't even know what to do, nor would we have any strength to do it. If it wasn't for Krishna within our heart, giving us every single power we have, what could we accomplish? So everything is his property, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. Bhoktaram Jagatapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. If we want to be peaceful, we understand these things. Krishna is the proprietor of everything, including all our skills and whatever we have and all resources. And everything ultimately is meant for his enjoyment. Because Krishna is the best well wishing friend of everyone. And if we really want to be a friend of someone, just be the representative of Krishna. The greatest friend just brings us to the ultimate friend, Krishna. You see, you have to be humble to be grateful. An egoistic person cannot actually be humble. We could speak in a humble way, but we can't in our heart be humble. To be grateful, we have to be humble, that we really appreciate. Is it grateful to think, you have given me this, but I deserve more? Or at least I deserve this. To actually be grateful, I don't deserve, but I'm getting. Thank you. And even if a wealthy man, patram pushpam palam toyam, even though may not need things, but we all need love, yes? A parent is grateful to a child when the child offers them love, or even a little gift out of love. To actually value what's really valuable to humble ourselves, then we could be grateful. Not that Krishna and the world see what I have done. Rather, thank you, Krishna. You allowed me to do this for you. This is your greatness. And all the world, you know, the, that you have accepted my service is your greatness. You have, you have accepted the service that Krishna has allowed me to do. That is your greatness. That is the Vaishnav consciousness. Does that answer your question? Really? <laughs> I'm very grateful to you. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada Ki Thank you very much.